o'clock. There you go. Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Commons at the Lodge. Uh, we're going to do a cooking demonstration for you today. Um, today we're going to do a really seasonal, uh, really local dish. Um, all the ingredients here today are uh, local from Hanover County. I purchased these ingredients from um, Whole Green Produce just down the street here. And uh, we're also going to be cooking a nice piece of Chesapeake Bay Rockford today. I have a buddy of mine who is the butcher and fishmonger at Publix, also right across the street. And he saved me a really beautiful filet of Chesapeake Bay Rockford. So everything we're doing today is really fresh and really local. And uh, that's kind of philosophy that we're, um, that we're leaning towards and that we're going for here at Covenant Woods. Um, if anyone is unaware, you know, Covenant Woods, we have our own uh, farm to table program here. Uh, the farm started about three years ago, I do believe. Um, I came on about a year and a half ago and uh, last summer was my first experience with the farm. Um, this year, we've actually doubled the size of the farm. Uh, I believe it was 5,000 square feet. Now we're up to 10. We're also putting in a greenhouse. And uh, so this summer, there's going to be a ton of just um, great product coming out of our garden to use right here at Covenant Woods that we grow ourselves. So that's pretty amazing. Um, speaking of summer, so... Summer's right around the corner, and this is a time of year where we actually start planning our summer menus. You know, um, spring is a little bit tough to cook in. The ingredients in spring are really fleeting. You know, um, they're kind of here, then they're gone. You know, you think about the specialty ingredients like ramps and morel mushrooms and shad roe and even asparagus. Um, like I said, they're really kind of just fleeting. They're here, and then they're gone. Uh, summer is a little bit more enduring. Uh, as far as products go. So, um, you know, this time of year we start thinking about summer. We start, we, you know, we want to start cooking that way. And uh, this dish is actually uh, a representation of that. So, like I said, all the ingredients here are local from Hanover County. And in the next couple of months, all of these ingredients are uh, actually going to be coming out right out of our farm here at Covenant Woods. So, uh, just a full description of the dish, we're going to do a pan-roasted Chesapeake Bay rockfish. Uh, we're going to do some summer vegetables and a uh, herb pis stew. And we'll get into the descriptions a little bit later. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, so the first thing we have here are uh, our local squash and zucchini. Um, when I demo this dish today, I'm going to uh, talk a lot about technique. Uh, as well as the ingredients. Um, you know, technique is how we create flavor and color and presentation on the plate, so that's that's pretty important. Um, so we'll just get into it. So what I have here, I'm going to start with my zucchini. Right, I'm just going to take the top off. I'm just going to cut. It's a little bit narrower, narrower at the top than it is towards the base, so I'm just going to cut some rounds from the top. I'm going to cut the end off. And then I'm just going to cut it in half so it's more a little more easily manageable. Uh, so the cut I'm going to show you, it's called an oblique cut. Uh, what that means is, is that it's cut diagonally. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to take the sides off, the skin and the innermost part of the flesh, um, and I'm going to leave the seeds. Uh, squash and zucchini, you know, it's mainly just, you know, they're mainly just water. And uh, I want the vegetables to be really crispy and really fresh and uh, not watery. So that's why I cut them like this, uh, just the outer skin and the innermost flesh. Now, the oblique cut, you want to cut it at about a 45-degree angle. Then you turn the vegetable about another 45 and cut again. Turn it the opposite way, cut again. And there you have something that's triangular, uh, and that's called an oblique cut. So we're going to just finish doing that with our zucchini. Turn the vegetable and cut. Turn the vegetable and cut. I think that's about enough for what I need for that. We're going to do the same thing with the yellow squash. Cut
cut the tip off of the rat. And same thing, it's a little bit narrower at the top than the bottom, so we're just going to take those nice round pieces. That dish looks really nice with, uh, you know, different shapes, um, different shapes mixed into the vegetable. It's not just all one thing, one dice, anything like that. Same thing, we'll break it down into a little bit easier managed piece. Same thing, just the skin and the innermost flesh. And same thing with the oblique cut. 45 degree angle. We'll turn it, cut it. Turn it, cut it. All right, this piece is a little bit bigger, so I'm going to break it down a little further just so it's all uniform in size. And if it's uniform in size, it'll all cook at the same time. You, uh, a bigger piece of vegetable will take longer to cook than a smaller piece. So there we have our squash and zucchini. All right. uh, the next element of our dish are um, little sweet peppers. Um, these also uh, come out of our garden. These were grown locally here in Hanover. Uh, they're first of the season peppers. They're really sweet. Uh, they're not hot. And uh, they just they just look really cool, right? They're they're not full-blown bell peppers. Um, different variety of colors here. We have red, we have yellow, we have orange. So I'm simply just going to cut these into about, I don't know, probably half-inch rings. That's the red. And now the yellow. Uh, we have another vegetable component to the dish today, and those are heirloom cherry tomatoes. Um, again, they're a variety of colors, so you know you have that that vibrance and that pop and that all that color on the plate. Um, these we're not going to cook; we're going to keep them raw. Again, this is a summertime dish. We're looking for it to be really light, really fresh. Um, one tip, if you get um, you know, fresh tomatoes from the farmer stand or um, anywhere you get your, or your own garden, uh, you don't really want to refrigerate them. Um, you know, once, once tomatoes are refrigerated, they lose that fresh out of the garden taste. So try to eat your tomatoes fresh out of the garden and try not to refrigerate them. So we're just going to cut these tomatoes in half, and again, we're not going to cook these. We're just going to set them to the side, and we're going to add them to the dish a little bit later. So we have our colors here. We have our red. We have our yellow. We have our orange. You know, some are larger. Some are smaller. So that variance in size looks nice on the plate. Let's see one more yellow. That's the vegetable component. We have, uh, I'm sorry, we have one more here. We have, um, these are um, spring onions or scallions or green onions, whatever you'd like to call them. Uh, again, these are grown here in Hanover County. Um, I trimmed some of the green off today. I'm just going to use the white part. So I took two things away. Now, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim the root end off. And I'm going to cut, uh, I don't know, probably two, three inches. Right. And then I'm going to cut them in half so you're not getting a big chunk of onion. And I think I'm going to do one more. Cut the root in two or three inches. And I'm going to cut it in half. So our vegetables for the dish are ready to go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get my pan pot, and uh, we're going to start cooking some fish, and we're going to start cooking some vegetables, and then we'll just bring the whole dish together. Okay. All right. 
So I have two pans here. We're going to cook the fish in one pan. We're going to pan roast the fish, and I'll show you the technique for that in just a few minutes. Uh, the other pan, uh, we're going to cook our vegetables in. So for the vegetables, I'm going to use a garlic oil. Um, basically, this is a, bri a byproduct of roasting garlic. Uh, you know, we use roasted garlic for a lot of things in the kitchen, marinades and soups and mashed potatoes or, you know, roasted garlic has a lot of different applications. Um, and then again, you get, the, you get the really deep, you get the really flavorful uh, oil that's left over from cooking it. So we don't waste that in the kitchen. We absolutely use it, and it's amazing on vegetables. So I have a little bit of roasted garlic oil here. I'm going to put it in the pan. All right, start letting that get hot. And then my other pan, I just have a plain olive oil, a blended olive oil. It's not extra virgin. Um, you know, you don't really want to use an extra virgin to, uh, to pan roast or saute fish. Um, you want to use a, a vegetable oil or a blended olive oil because the smoking point is hotter and it won't burn. So the next pan, we're going to put a little, just a little blended olive oil in here. We're going to let that start getting hot. I'm going to turn my heat up just a touch. All right, so we're going to start our vegetables here. So I have a pan with my garlic oil in it, and we're just going to add our veggies into that, our squash, our zucchini, our sweet peppers, and our, um, our green onions. Just a quick tip, you don't want to overload your pan. Uh, you, kinda, you want the vegetables to make contact with the surface of the pan so they all get... Um, so they start to get caramelized. If you just put a big heap of vegetables in your saute pan, they're just going to steam and sweat. And that's the whole reason we didn't put the seed pocket in because we didn't want it to be, um, you know, we didn't want it to be watery. So we have our vegetables in there. Everybody's kind of spread out. There's some nice contact with the saute pan itself, right? Always season. So we're going to season. This is just salt and pepper. And always season your food. Season at the beginning, and we season at the end. Right? We season at the beginning, and then we taste. And if it needs more, we can add more. Right? So then we have our other pan here. We have our beautiful fillet of Chesapeake Bay rockfish. Right? This is a Virginia product. This is. Um, you know, this is about as Virginia as it gets right here uh, when you're talking fish with rockfish. So beautiful filet here. I had a buddy of mine snag for me. I'm going to take that. We're also going to season that with some salt and pepper, both sides. And we're going to put that in our pan. You can see when you pan roast something, I don't know if you can see from the camera here, but I have a little bit of smoke coming from the pan. My oil has started smoking a little bit. And that's what you want. You never want to put your fish, whether it could be fish, chicken, anything, you never want to put it in a cold pan, right? Because we're, we're looking to create some color, and we're looking to get a nice sear on it. So that's going to go in that pan. Okay. All right. So... We have our vegetables searing. I can smell them already. I know they're starting to get brown. I can smell them getting brown. All right. Just a couple of more seconds. All right. Our fish is searing. just going to give our vegetables a flip and you can see they picked up some really nice color here right they've made contact with that pan they've picked up a little a little sear a little char you know I always say uh, brown food tastes good right if your food's not brown it's probably not going to taste as good as it should so brown food tastes good so we're going to let that keep doing that right our fish now when you pan roast fish you can almost see how far along you are you know, you can, 
you can see the level of doneness coming up from the fish as it cooks, right? So this fish is, you know, it's about 25% of the way there already. Um, you know, beautiful piece of fish like this. It's local. Uh, you don't want to overcook it. So... I'm just going to check to see where we're at. Right. We're not there yet. I don't want to flip that just yet. So we're going to talk about a technique called pan roasting. Um, you know, this technique works for anything. It works for fish. It works for chicken. It works for steaks. And um, it's just a way to create a lot of flavor. So, you know, our fish is about a quarter of the way there. So what we have here is I have a bundle of fresh thyme. I've just tied it with a little bit of butcher's twine so I don't have to go chasing it around in the pan. And we're gonna put that, we're gonna put that right in the pan. You can instantly hear that sizzling and, and crackling. Uh, next thing I have here is a couple of cloves of fresh garlic. Right, I'm just gonna give those a smash in the pan. Smash in the pan. Right, and the final step to pan roasting is I have whole butter. Right, we're going to add a couple, two, three knobs of whole butter. And you'll see what I'm going to do with that in a second. Okay. All right, our veg is almost done. So you can see, you hear that thyme crackling in there? Uh, the butter's melting, the garlic is sizzling along. So, you know, I said our fish was about a quarter of the way done. Now it's about halfway done. So uh, this is about the time. You know, I, I don't have a timer. I guess I would guesstimate four to five minutes per side maybe. Um, but this is a technique that you can do, and it's, you know, you can do it visually. So that's always nice when you're cooking, right? You get to know your product. You get to know how far along it is. And you just get a feel for kind of, uh, of how it goes. So we're going to flip it over, right? So you have a really nice sear on this side, if you can see that. Right now, all right, our veg is done, right? It's not overcooked. It's not undercooked. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. I'm going to remove that from the heat. Right, so pan roasting, right? We flipped our fish over. We have our butter melted, our garlic. I'm going to tilt this pan and all this brown butter and melted butter and garlic and thyme, I'm just going to baste the fish with it, right? And I like to, I take this thyme and I'll put it right over the fish. And I tilt my pan back and I just start basting. Right, so I'm basting all that, that garlic and thyme flavored butter all over our, our delicious rockfish here. You just you keep letting that fish cook in that flavored butter, and the butter gets brown and it gets nutty, and it's just, it's just delicious. And like I said, this technique works for anything, chicken, um, a nice filet, New York strip, any kind of steak. And, um, you know, we just keep basting. You know, until you get the hang of this technique and you get the feel uh, for the product you're cooking, whether it be chicken or fish or whatever. Um, a handy tip would always to be uh, is to have a digital thermometer. You know, we use these in the kitchen all day, every day. All my cooks are required to have a thermometer on them to make sure the food is cooked at the proper temperature. Um, fish, you want it to be about 145 degrees. You know, that's done. So... I know that this fish is just going to take a couple of more minutes. It's not quite there yet. Uh, I'll, I'll get back to checking in in a minute. And in the meantime, I'm just going to keep basting it with this butter and this garlic and this thyme. You know, if, if, you get in, uh, if you get nervous and you think your butter is getting a little too dark, that's fine. You can just, you can just add another knob of butter, right? You can't have too much butter. Not going to hurt a thing in the world. So our fish is slowly roasting. You know, it, it does. It, it takes a minute, but 
believe me, it's, it's, worth, uh, it's worth the time. So I believe we're just about there. So I'm going to check with my trusty thermometer here. And there we go. We're about 140 degrees right now. So about another 30 seconds in the pan, then I'm going to, um, then I'm going to pull it off. Keep basting the whole time. All right. So that's that. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring the dish together. I'm going to play a little space here. So we can see everything. I'm just going to lay a towel down. I'm going to take my fish out of the pan. I'm just going to rest it on that towel, right? And that's just because I don't want any butter or any oil smudging my plate when I go to plate it. All right. So now we're going to get into the plating of this dish. So I have a really nice big presentation plate here. I find that, um, you know, you... The bigger the plate, the nicer the, the presentation you can, um, you can make. Uh, modern presentation these days with chefs and restaurants or, um, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a, a theory out there where you plate on one side of the plate, you create something called a negative, uh, negative space, and then, so there's all kinds of modern ways to plate food nowadays. I won't bore you with that. I'll just show you how I'm going to do it here today. So the last component to this dish is an herb pistou. Um, now, pistou is the French form of the Italian pesto. So, you know, Italian pesto has basil and garlic, pine nuts, Parmesan cheese. Uh, the French have a version called pistou, um, and it, it usually doesn't contain pine nuts and sometimes not even Parmesan cheese. Um, so I've taken a little create, you know, sometimes we take a little creative license here, and instead of a traditional basil uh, pistou, I've made an herb pistou. And again, uh, these herbs were all bought at, uh, bought at the farmer's market, and all of these herbs that are in here are going to be coming out of our garden here in a couple of months. So there is um, so what, what we call soft herbs. There is uh, fresh parsley, uh, some mint, um, some cilantro, and all, just all kinds of soft green herbs in here. So what I've done is I, I've actually I've blanched them. Uh, blanching vegetables you just or, or herbs, you just uh, put them in a little boiling water for a couple of seconds, and you shock them in ice water. And what that does is, is that sets the color, and that gives you this really vibrant green color that we have here. If I was to take these herbs and just put them in a blender with some olive oil, um, it would it would be kind of milky looking, kind of uh, really dull. So, but what we have here is uh, some really bright green, vibrant herbs mixed with um, a little bit of garlic, some salt and pepper, and uh, a lot of good quality extra virgin olive oil. This is one preparation in a pesto or anything like that. Anything where you're not going to cook anything further, good quality extra virgin olive oil is the way you want to go. So. We're going to go ahead and we're going to plate the dish. So we have our vegetables, right? our squash, our zucchini, our sweet peppers. And we're just going to lay those out kind of in a semicircle on a plate. Right, we'll make sure we get a little bit of each color, the green, the yellow, the red. Some 
little spring onions in there. Right, you can already see how colorful this is, right? This is um, already looking pretty good. And if you wanted to make this dish a little bit harder, you know, there's no reason that you couldn't add some potatoes into this. But thinking about summer and uh, just keeping it really light, really fresh. So that's our vegetable component to the dish. See, we're kind of in a semi-circle there. Next, we're going to place our rockfish on. We'll remove the thyme, the garlic, and anything that is on top. We're going to place that just off to the right-hand side. So you can see we have our vegetables, we have our fish, and we've kind of created a little, a little pool right in the center. And that's where we're going to put our herb to stew. that around there. All right. Finally, just to garnish the dish, um, you know, talking about our garden and uh, things that are coming out of our garden here at Covenant Woods, uh, currently right now, we have all kinds of little, little pretty flowers growing in our garden. And um, I was fortunate enough to have our gardener, Jen, uh, bring me some edible edible flowers. Um, we have some violas and some pansies. And that's, frankly, all I remember <laughs> what she told me. We have a few different kinds here. So we have these beautiful little, little yellow flowers. Again, they're edible. And what we're going to do is we're just going to garnish our dish with them. Kind of just going to put them around. Kind of just alternating colors. They're, they're just really gorgeous. just very fortunate to, to be able to call up your gardener and go, hey, I'm doing a cooking demo. Do you have any little edible flowers? She's like, sure. So we're, we're, we're really fortunate here to have our garden, to have our farmer, and uh, to be able to provide us with these products that we use. It's really great. So finally, we're just going to clean up our dish here, make sure we don't have any smudges. You know, I think this, uh, this dish is nice enough to serve at a dinner party. It's also easy enough to, you know, just have a casual uh, weekday summer meal. So I don't know how well you can see this here, but here we have our um, pan-roasted rockfish, our sautéed summer, ve summer vegetables, and uh, our herpes stew. And we're garnished with some uh, edible flowers from our garden. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the dish. I enjoyed doing it for you. So thank you very much. Have a great day.